hey, all these people are talking shit on the internet and this guy is trying to show everybody like, okay, this is the stuff you should be talking shit about. You finished 160, you weren't gonna make the top 120. That's the type of stuff I'm trying to bring a light to. Oh, so I did it. I've been talking all this crap about how it's not that hard to fix the leaderboard. If it's your only job to do is when you're putting on a competition, you want to make sure the leaderboard looks right. You want to make sure that everyone who's putting all this time into this competition, if you're the governing body of this competition, you want to make sure the people who are populating the spots you said are there are the right people in the right spots, right? So I keep on talking crap like, why wouldn't you do that if it's your only job? So I decided to do it. I wanted to show you how easy it was. Now, I'm not making any money doing this. I'm just merely bringing it to attention of everybody. And I hope that through bringing it to everybody's attention, maybe it puts a little bit of pressure on them. And it says, hey, this guy can do it in his garage with no incentive other than to bring it to attention. Then maybe we should be doing it. Maybe we should do it right now. And if not right now, definitely do it next year. So I gave myself a couple of hours and I scrubbed the leaderboard. I scrubbed the leaderboard on workout number three, which we know has been causing a lot of hubbub. If you go on the internet and you click around, Around, you know that anywhere you go, workout number three is a mess. And bring your brooms because it's a mess. People aren't doing the right number of shuttle runs. People aren't measuring the rope. People aren't using judges. People are trying to get their names taken off the leaderboard and they can't take their names off the leaderboard. And then people like me are making videos showing how easy it was just to go on YouTube and find these videos. And people don't even know that they're doing this. People couldn't read the workout for whatever reason, which means that there was an issue with the way that it was presented to everybody. There's people in my comments section who still didn't understand that, that how to do the shuttle runs. I posted a clip of how to do shuttle runs and people were saying, hey, all you gotta do is touch the line. It's how you've done shuttle runs your whole life. Life. And I go, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think. Because all that matters is what it says you gotta do shuttle, like get your entire body behind the line and touch the ground. Doesn't matter if you touch one hand past it, freaking idiot. I showed you the picture. Now anyway, I told you it was easy to do it, so I did it. It took a little while, but I went from scores zero through 500 on workout number three, and I guess it would be workouts one through 500 on workout number three, and I picked out all the ones that were out of place. It's called deductive reasoning, and I've talked about it, Brian and friends talked about it, and our best example was Brian Sanchez. Before we saw his video, we could look at it and understand that it wasn't supposed to be there. Brian Sanchez, you see, he finished in the thousands, in the thousands on workouts one and two, in the thousands, in the thousands on workouts workouts four and five, and then he was third on workout number three. And you go, okay, that's probably not there. That workout will be taken out. CrossFit never took it out, and then they finalized the leaderboard. In every single continent, everywhere across the freaking world, this is an issue. You see it everywhere. You see that there's scores where they shouldn't be there. And you've also heard people like myself and Brian say how it's rather easy to pick them out. But what I did is I did the easy thing, and I went and I picked them out. I went from spots one through 500, and I picked out 141 scores that were out of place. Deductive reasoning is what you use. You say, okay, right, through 300, it wasn't that hard. There were scores that were just out of place. There's no way that you finish in the top 200 when you're other scores were none of them anywhere near that. You had a bunch of scores in the 800s and then you finished in the 150s, your score is coming out. And then once you get from 300 to 500, it got a little bit more challenging, but there were athletes there you would recognize. You'd say, hey, it's Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad, you're a games athlete, yeah? Didn't you win the 2014 legless rope climb workout? Here with a makeup from that last, last, last event. His jump gives him in one more to the top for him. Elijah Muhammad, two rounds in 30 seconds. The fastest pace we've seen so far. He is yet to slow down, and with that jump, the camera can't keep up with him. So you're pretty good at rope climbs, and I mean, you're a former basketball player? Shuttle run should be no problem, so there's no way this guy's name should be here, so you pluck that name out because the score was, again, not anywhere near his other scores. Now, I understand that there is flaw to this. So you're gonna say, Andrew, you probably pulled out too many. Now, how about the ones that I missed? We brought up Joseph Keeson not doing rope climbs to the right height. Maybe he did the shuttle runs right. Maybe he has a good score. Maybe all the rest of his scores are right, but maybe he's not good at rope climbs. And 141, I feel, is a completely fair, where you miss some, you get some, 141's the number. So I have those organized and populated on an Excel sheet from one to 141. I have all the numbers listed out so that when I would pull up the athletes I'm about to bring up, all I would have to do is I would have their score and I would go onto my Excel sheet and I would pull out all of the improper scores and give them a new score. I would then use their total current points and I would subtract it and give them a new projected total points. Hope you followed all that. Makes a lot of sense to me. I also did due diligence in finding out that 
outside of the bracket. So I went from 110 to 126. And I went from those ranges because those were the ones that were affected. I went from those ranges because 109 wasn't affected and nothing from 109 to the bottom to the top wasn't affected. But from 109 all the way to Justin Medeiros who won the thing. They weren't affected. You look at Justin Medeiros, he's way the hell up there. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happened with him. He was going to finish where he was. None of this is going to affect him. Sure, there'd be some shuffling, but we don't really care. It doesn't matter. care about shuffling. These people wanted to make the semifinals. The 120 spot is all we care about and what's affected here. So I don't care if you went from 90 to 80 or 80 to 100. I care if you went from 123 to 119 because all of a sudden then you're into the semifinals. So again, I'll tell you, it went from 110 to 126. Actually, I want to start off with 112. Robert Yates, he's a pretty good example of somebody who was rather affected, made the cut, will continue to make the cut by my new projected format here. So he finished 376th in workout number three. He was affected by quite a few people finishing that low on that workout. His new score is 258. It means that he was affected by 109 people when I looked at my Excel sheet. You also need to adjust his total points on the leaderboard, that being 1223, and his new total points on the leaderboard is 114. All that aside, he still makes the semifinal. He's in the cut line. Right underneath him, you look at Tucker McLemore. 70 seconds where he finished. So he finished much better than Robert Yates on that workout. And because he finished much better, he's not affected by as many people. On that, he was only affected by 28 people. So his new projected finish on workout number three is 44, which is still better, but it's not so much better that it could help him stay within the cut line. So Tucker McLemore, he went from 1229 total points, subtract 28 from 1229, and he ends up at 1201. With my new projected format, he's now out of the cut line. He finished at 113. He's out now. I have that all written up, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. You know what? I'm just going to throw it up right now. I think it'd be easier if I show it to you right now. So here it is. We go from Marshall Creed all the way to Logan Ewing, and I don't know how to pronounce everyone's name. Some of you guys have hard names pronounced, and I'm sorry if I butcher them, but you guys now are just statistics on a piece of paper. Here are your scores. Here's my projected format. So when you look at this, you can see that I have their current workout three, their new workout three score. I have their current total points and their new total points. I have their current position. I have these color codes. So they're all pretty and you can understand from 110 to 120, you see that's all green. Those people made the cut as the leaderboard has been finalized from 121 to 126. Those are red. Those people did not make the cut. With the new proposed format where I have scrubbed the leaderboard, I did all the math for you guys. I pulled out the improper scores for the people who probably weren't doing the right things on their workouts for whatever reason it may be. What you come to is there are now red spots in the green and there are green spots in the red. When there are green spots where there were red spots, it means that they are now in to the semifinal. Where there are red spots where there were green spots, it means that they are out of the semifinal. It looks pretty clear right here. You can see that Marshall Creed, Tucker McLemore, Kyle Brenier, and Mike McDonald are out of the semifinal. And this has nothing to do with them. I'm not trying to attack them. Remember, they are statistics on a piece of paper. It shows that they did really, really well on workout three, and they weren't as affected by all of these improper scores on the leaderboard. We've talked about, oh, I need to get in. I got to get in. I got to get in. And all these people are all up in arms because they're not getting into the freaking scores, getting into the freaking semifinal because of all these people who weren't doing the workouts right. But we haven't been talking about the people who are going to get booted. And those are the people who did really well on workout three. And it's not that they should be punished, but it is something where the leaderboard should be written up properly by CrossFit. This should have never been an issue in the first place. Mike McDonald shouldn't be sitting there thinking, oh, I'm in. And then be thinking, oh man, I shouldn't be in. This, it's an uncomfortable sensation to go through. And it's all CrossFit that's doing this to these people. Marshall Creed's at 110 and he's well within the cut line. If you do the scrubbing like I did, and this is only 500 athletes that I grabbed. I grabbed him in my garage. 500 athletes and all of a sudden he's going to go all the way down the leaderboard because he did too well on a workout. That doesn't seem right. And of course, this is just one workout. If you did every single workout, did your due diligence as you should, who knows what's going to happen. But if you just look at workout number three and you scrub with the wet eye did, you see that it's a mess. Mitch McLean, Jordy Jermelian, Drake Lewis, Skylar Oceanic, Will Bennett all get their way into the semifinals just by looking at workout number three. Logan Ewing, he was really close. The new cut line that I came up with was 182 points. Oh, the old cut line was 1265. You need 1265 or less points to get into the semifinal. Once you scrub down the leaderboard, the new cut line was 1182. And everybody on my proposed document here who's under 1182, they're in. As I told you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 110 and lower. I already looked. None of those people go up above or below 1182. So that's why they're not listed here. But the athletes from 110 to 126, they're all 
at or around that 1182. And Marshall Creed is probably the biggest mover. His score wasn't affected by anybody. It was Jeff Adler, Marshall Creed, and then Brian Sanchez. Brian Sanchez is the first person that you need to put into my Excel spreadsheet to pull from. And then the next pro closest person on this list is Tucker McLemore. He was affected by the second least amount of people, which is why he moved so far down the leaderboard. Same thing with Kyle Bernier. He was the third least affected because of now the three people that I've listed, the third best scoring individual. So he moves further down the leaderboard, which is why you see that he moved out of a qualifying position. Then you look at somebody like Will Bennett. Will Bennett has a score of 800. So he was affected by all 141 of the people that I had mentioned. You also have Skylar Oceanic, and he is affected also by all 141 people. So with my format here, I had to subtract their total current number and current total points on the leaderboard from, or the, the 141 from that number, and all of a sudden, they're under the 182 cut line. So I just thought it was pretty cool. I thought you should see what this looks like, because a lot of people say, oh, I, maybe I can get in, maybe I can get in. And from the looks of it, it doesn't affect as many people as you would think. So I know I had mentioned Lucas Parker, who was in the 140s, like the upper 140s, maybe 148, 149, and it doesn't seem as if he would get in. That is, if you just look at the 500. He might, depending on how many scores actually are wrong. Remember, I said there is going to be an issue with my pickout method, and I on the law of averages, I think I'd pretty, I was pretty close. And to be honest, 141 scores out of 500 is a lot of scores, but he would need to do quite a bit of moving to get in there. And I think I also referenced he would have had to have had 230 people kicked out. You would also have to have somebody like Marshall Creed who did so well that he would have to be one of the people to move out. And it's unlikely that that would happen. So there are a lot of athletes who are rather far outside of the cut line that are probably throwing up a stink that shouldn't, but there are definitely some athletes who are right there. And you're looking at the Will Bennett's, you're looking at the Skylar O. Oceanics, you're looking at the Drake Lewis, the Jordy Jermelian, and the Mitch McClure, McClune, and those people should totally be throwing a stink. And I hope that I don't get any sort of, hey, shut the fuck up, Andrew. I deserve my spot. Mike McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. It's like, all right, yeah, sure. You should deserve your spot. You're very fit. I know that's not easy to get there, but this is just math, man. I'm just doing math. And if you don't like math, I don't know. I'm just here doing my due diligence, the stuff that CrossFit should be doing. And I hope that you like it. If you like this sort of stuff, send it around. Say, hey, this is some guy in his garage who did everything that CrossFit should be doing. You should go subscribe to his channel. Hey, all these people are talking shit on the internet and this guy is trying to show everybody like, okay, this is the stuff you should be talking shit about. You finished 160, you weren't going to make the top 120. That's the type of stuff I'm trying to bring a light to. Subscribe to the channel, share, have fun, tell your friends. Bye.